President Obama's speech in New York was the big A-list headline on Wall Street reform today. But today's real legislative action was about part of the financial sector that's fought really hard to not be nationally regulated at all. Uh, and that's because what they do is something that's commonly thought of as loan sharking. They don't call themselves loan sharks, of course. They call themselves payday lenders which makes them sound less like cartoon villains, but doesn't really change what they actually are. Here's how payday lenders market themselves. At check into cash, things go your way. When you got a cash crunch or a money made day, we cash your personal check between paydays. It's a quick hip hop to you one stop money shop. Check into cash. She loves our quick and easy payday advanced services. Between paydays, I go to my neighborhood, check into cash. The only original, uniquely individual, one-stop money shop, check into cash. So you got a cash crunch or a money mayday. You hip-hop to your payday lender and they'll give you cash. Uh, they give you cash as they sort of advance on your next paycheck. And when your next paycheck comes in, you better hope you can pay off that loan and the fee they charged you for that loan, because if not... Maybe then you'll be taking out another loan. Roll that amount you couldn't pay back, plus, pl plus that fee that you couldn't pay back, plus a new fee into a new, bigger payday loan, and hope that maybe on your next payday you'll be able to pay back even more. If on your next payday you can't pay back even more, well, why not just roll it over again? Original loan amount, original fee, second fee, third fee, roll it all together. How much do you owe them now? This is how payday lenders end up breaking in up to 400% interest on their loans. Uh, they make these little loans seem so simple, but just like with loan sharks, just like with the most predatory credit cards, you slip up, it rolls over, and pretty soon you are very deep underwater, as in 400% annual interest underwater. According to the most generous estimates of how payday lending works, only about 25% of payday lending customers pay off their loans on their next paycheck on time, which is exactly how these companies like it. How else are you going to get somebody up to 400% interest unless you can roll them over? Payday lending is so bad that a few years ago, the military asked the government to crack down on payday lending to our troops and cap interest rates paid by members of the armed services because so many military families and young soldiers were being preyed upon and financially ruined by payday lending. Congress did actually cap payday lending interest rates for troops, but us civilians were still swimming with the sharks. Now, um, this guy who came in at the very end of that commercial that we showed you, uh, his name is Alan Jones. He's the CEO of the first nationwide payday lending chain, which is called Check Into Cash. Unlike his customers, Alan Jones is not exactly living paycheck to paycheck. According to Tennessee Business Magazine in 2005, Alan Jones was one of the 20 richest people in the great state of Tennessee, worth maybe half a billion dollars. Here's an aerial view of what we believe is his 400-acre spread in Cleveland, Tennessee, while it was still under construction. According to Tennessee Business Magazine, his home has, quote, an air-conditioned muscle car garage highlighted by his $300,000 Maybach, an on-site greenhouse with a full-time horticulturalist, a three-story treehouse, and a regulation-sized football field with lights, a scoreboard, and supporting fieldhouse and stands. He has a regulation-sized, fully lit football field and stands in his backyard. He once hosted the country's first private college football game. Not private as in these were private colleges, but private as in it was held in Allen's yard. Want to see Alan Jones's boat? This is the Janie, named after his wife. It's actually his second yacht. He bought this one for a reported $24 million after his first yacht burned down. And at least for a while, you could rent this yacht uh, for $25,000 a day plus expenses. So this is the face of payday lending. And he actually wants to be. The reason that we have all this information about Alan Jones's ostentatious wealth is because he likes to show it off. Alan Jones is not hiding his half-billion-dollar light under a bushel. He's putting himself in TV commercials. He's blogging now about the poor payday lending industry and how it shouldn't be regulated when financial reform happens. His argument is that payday lenders are poor. This was his first blog post. Despite rhetoric, payday lenders earn minimum wage. <laughs> he says, quote, uh, it's a store that earns eight ninety six dollars for each hour they're open, raking it in. Believe it or not, some elitist people in the mainstream media think so. Break down the profits of the nation's largest payday lender, and it becomes clear that this industry isn't raking in heaps of money. 
Jones then divides monthly earnings statements from other payday lending companies by the number of stores and the number of hours they're open. He decides that the whole industry is only making minimum wage or less. This is hardly raking in the cash. He says it's hard to feel like a predatory lender when you make about the same wage as the average employee at Burger King, a company which, by the way, netted $200 million last year. Whoppers are clearly more profitable than payday loans. So payday lending king Alan Jones may be going to have to sell the Maybach, right? Or the yacht or the 433 acres in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, or maybe get back some of those campaign donations he's given over the years to his friend and Senate Banking Committee member Bob Corker, maybe just to make ends meet. Right now, payday lenders like Alan Jones are not regulated by the federal government at all. It's left to the states. Some states have effectively banned payday lending. Some have capped interest rates that payday lenders can charge, which has effectively driven them out of business in their states. One of those states was North Carolina, home of Senator Kay Hagan, who now says she wants to do the same thing for the whole country. Senator Hagan introduced a bill today, which is called the Payday Lending Limitation Act. And it would keep creditors from lending money to borrowers who have taken out payday loans six times in 12 months. People caught in the trap, in other words. It would give borrowers more time to pay back their debts. And it would put the payday lending industry under federal oversight. The Community Financial Services Association of America represents payday lenders, founded naturally by Alan Jones. Uh, they told us today, in response to Kay Hagan's proposed legislation, quote, we oppose this. It limits consumer choice. We're regulated by the states, like all non-bank lenders. The federal government has bigger concerns than $345 loans at 400% interest. And you know, he has a point. That is not the kind of thinking that puts my box in Alan Jones's garage. <laughs> Next week, the Senate takes up financial reform in earnest. So as you watch the payday lending industry marshal its forces to plead poverty, to try to stop the threat of them actually finally being regulated. Just remember this face and his private football stadium and 400% interest to people who don't have enough money to make it to their next paycheck.